I'm Clark Heidrich, and I'm one of the members of the board of Central Health. For those who are not familiar with Central Health, it is the agency here in Travis County that's responsible for the care of unfunded patients. And it's also the agency through which the taxpayers of Travis County are going to make an investment in this wonderful medical school. And we're all so proud of that. Several of our board members are here. I see Brenda Coleman Beatty, who's our current chair, and Rosie Mendoza, who was last year's chair. Mm. Our CEO, Trish Young, who's right there, who's been leading us for a long time. Mm. In behalf of our board and staff, uh, we are delighted to welcome you as the inaugural dean of the Dell Medical School at the University of Texas at Austin. It's a great day for Central Health. It's a great day for the university and, and for all of us in the, in the community. Dr. Johnston, as you can tell, uh, is a very distinguished scholar and researcher. Our perception of Dr. Johnston, most importantly, is that he is a leader. He is going to be a leader in developing new curriculum for medical students at this university that will be different than other places. Uh, that will teach medical students to play, as Dr. Ken Shine likes to say, team ball, the way medicine is going to be practiced in this century, working with nurses, pharmacists, social workers, the whole team that's going to have to take care of the population, and certainly the population that Central, Central Health serves. He will be a leader in connecting the new medical school with great research that's going on, already going on on campus and giving new venues and applications for that research uh, through the clinical opportunities that this medical school is going to offer. He will be a leader in connecting the new medical school with the great physicians that we have practicing right now in Central Texas, and they're going to be key to its success. He will be a leader in connecting this new medical school with the business community which very much has embraced this medical school and wants very much to work with the new medical school in developing new opportunities for biotechnology in Central Texas. Most importantly, from the standpoint of Central Health, Dr. Johnson has a heart for taking care of poor and vulnerable people. And he will be a leader in working with the growing partnership that Central Health and Seton and the University of Texas and others are developing and building a new system of care. He will be a thought leader in doing that, and we're very proud to have him. Doctor, your tasks are many, uh, but you will have the support of not only the great University of Texas and everybody in it, but you will have the support of all of us in this community in making this a great institution and making it everything that you want it to be. And one observation that you would make about this community is that we have demonstrated that we know how to play together. Senator Watson has, has led us and will continue to lead us. And you will have the support, the full support, of the group that worked to bring this medical school into being. And we'll now be working to support your efforts to make it great. Every good wish. I have a couple of hours of announcements to make. <laughs> now, Seton has, was delighted to be part of this process to select the dean, the founding dean for the Dell Medi School of Medicine. Dr. Johnston uh, is everything we were looking for, and uh, he has understanding, uh, his outstanding record indicates that he'll be a valuable member of this community. At the outset of all of this, when Senator Watson outlined the 10 and 10, there were many doubting Thomases that this would work. This uh, was a too difficult a task, too many issues to tackle. But I think that today's announcement is an affirmation that this community, through the leadership of Senator Watson, has moved in the right direction. And I think Dr. Johnson is going to be a, a valuable member, as I said, a valuable member of this community. And it's going to be an outstanding uh, uh, participant in the development of this medical school. So the work that we do together for the medical school, the new teaching hospital, the development and implementation of projects that improve the health of the poor and the vulnerable has great meaning for all of us because of it, the lives that it affects in this community. Seton, with the help of the generous community, will build a teaching hospital that will be suited for teaching medical students in the new era of medicine. And we will also continue our long, run, long support for the training of clinicians for tomorrow 
As it stands today, we have 16 residency programs and 243 residents. We are fortunate to have the outstanding faculty and community physicians that supervise these residents and that would only become better under the guidance of Dr. Johnston. I think I speak for, the, uh, for everyone at, seat, at the Seton Healthcare family when I say that we look forward to working with you and uh, that as you guide the development of the medical school, uh, we can only expect great things for our community with your leadership and the leadership of this community. So thank you very much. Well, in closing, let me just say this is an exciting day. It's an historic day. And we've thanked a lot of people who are in this room today. I want to close by thanking people who are not in this room. And those are the citizens of Travis County. The citizens of Travis County who said yes to better health care and said yes to creating a world-class medical school and medical education in Central Texas. We are very grateful for the trust you have put into us. We look forward to serving you, to working with you, and to making you proud. And with that, the new dean, Dr. Johnson, and the rest of us would be happy to take questions. Thank you. Um, well, one is, is uh, thinking about what education, medical education really should look like. Um, and uh, I think if you, we all know what, med, what healthcare looks like today, how it, how it works. It's, it's not a sustainable system. Um, and it, um, it doesn't empower patients enough um, and doesn't give them the tools to really take health into their hands. And it doesn't, it's, um, it requires this encounter face to face with a with a, a, a physician that's inefficient and doesn't necessarily respect the time of the patient or the physician, then gets devalued so that that visit gets to down to eight minutes and there's no useful content in it. We need to to take a look at healthcare and the systems of education to create the kind of health system that we want. Physicians are gonna have a different role in that system. Education needs to anticipate that. So that is, uh, that's what I'm most excited about doing. So how we get there from here is not so easy. It's easy to envision a new curriculum where, you know, it's a, it is, it's, a, it's, team, it's gotta be built on teams. You know, you, you respect what the physician is necessary to do and you make sure there's adequate time for the physician and patient to have that kind of input, but recognize the potential roles for others, including of technology. I mean, look, I don't have to see a bank teller to take money out of the, <laughs> you know, so it's a, for a refill where I don't have problems, why do I go in and wait and a bunch of sick people in a waiting room and uh, to, just to get a refill? So, um, so that's part of it. But then the, the other part is how do we work within our existing healthcare structure to, to allow us to innovate and to create these new models of care. Because currently the way we're paid is by the number of visits and the number of expensive procedures that are done. That's gonna take a lot of creative work. Um, and I can't, have not found good models where an academic medical center has um, engaged with its partners. Um, we have got great innovative partners here. Somehow we have to create a system in which when we redesign healthcare, the economics embrace that. They don't fight against it. And so that, that is a, a challenge we're going to work on with the partners, but it's one I'm really excited about um, setting up. Once we lay that foundation, then it opens up um, innovation to a lot more um, uh, possibilities, a lot more people. Yeah, so I uh, have been given permission to continue my uh, research which is uh, fabulous. So I do, uh, 
um, trials in stroke, mostly in prevention um, and acute treatment of stroke, um, and uh, uh, sponsored by the NIH and also by uh, industry. And I will continue to do those here. I've got a great research team. They're going to come with me. Um, and then some of the other projects that we're working on um, uh, that relate to healthcare delivery, um, relate to new models for doing research. I'm very hopeful that we'll also bring those, uh, some of those here. Um, uh, so we're looking for opportunities to do that as well. Could you give us an idea of what kind of uh, services may be available uh, here in Austin thanks to the new medical school? So, so first of all, I should say this is a 20-year project. <laughs> this is not going to all happen tomorrow. And there are, you know, all the things that we want the medical school to be. Um, it takes a long time to do that. So we're going to have to think about how to prioritize uh, amongst uh, really great priorities across the spectrum. So I, I've got to say that, well, priority one is, is hiring the team and bringing that team in. Um, that's going to take a lot of attention um, in the first year or more. Um, uh, we're going to get fabulous people here because of the freedom to operate and the, you know, the, the, the foundations that you all have set for the school. Um, we've got to get the med, med school accredited, right? I mean, that's a, we got to, we're in med school. We got to, we want to train new physicians. The community needs new physicians. That's going to take us um, some more time and energy and focus. Um, Sue's made, Sue Cox has made fabulous progress in there and a great foundation, so a good place to start. I'm very interested in the, in the care delivery issues. We've got, again, two good partners. We'll probably, have, there may be others, but these are uh, our two very important big partners. Um, and together, they are already uh, providing um, excellent services across the spectrum with some additional needs. One of my early priorities is to sit down with them and talk about how we're going to structure our arrangements so that they get the most out of us. and the community, therefore, gets the most out of these new models of care. I am very focused on the, the fact that uh, technology is critical to Austin um, and that, you, um, that the citizens are ready for it and that there are means to use technology to empower patients to, to take more responsibility for their health. I also think that we need to think about using technology to understand what the health needs are in our community better um, not on a every five-year basis, but on a, a daily basis. Anticipate those needs and provide the services before patients are showing up in the emergency department. And so that's another system that I, I want to discuss with the, with the partners um, uh, early on. Sure, yeah. So, um, so first of all, unfortunately, I won't bring my whole team, but I'll bring some critical members of the team that it's, um, uh, some are, are, uh, are not movable. But, um, but um, the, uh, so one of the major studies we're doing now is a um, clinical trial that's sponsored by uh, National Institutes of Health. Um, and we're looking at one of my major areas of focus are transient ischemic attacks, TIAs. Um, some people call them mini strokes. They're strokes that go away. Um, in those and minor strokes, it ends up that they have a very high risk of having a major stroke afterwards. So, and this was some work that we helped to contribute to early in my career to show that, you know, these are basically ticking time bombs. And it's not a ticking time bomb over years, it's a ticking time bomb over days. And so, our trial um, is trying to find treatments for that. Um, for that really high risk period. Um, and the, with the NIH, we're testing a, a generic drug, uh, clopidogrel, uh, better known as Plavix from when it wasn't a generic drug and you saw the ads on TV over and over again, together with aspirin to try to prevent these new events. And then more recently, uh, uh, AstraZeneca um, got interested in this indication and we're now partnering with them to test a, a newer drug called Ticagrelor in that setting, which is a more powerful drug that blots clotting.
potential here? What, do you want to kind of follow models, blazing new cores? Can you talk a little bit about the business interaction with the medical school, how that's going to work? Yeah, that's a great question. So I think, um, uh, I think the, the models in Boston are, are quite good. Uh, MIT actually, better than just about any other place, has, has done this well. Um, but uh, uh, Harvard Medical School has also done it well. Um, UCSF has done it pretty well. And we've tried to actually uh, do, it, do it better there. Um, one, of the, one of the critical elements is bringing together business and the university so that the two understand each other's cultures. They don't need to live each other's culture, but there needs to be an understanding of what the other is looking for um, and also in um, when there's something ready to be moved out of the university that there's a, a recognition of that. Um, and um, we, I think that's going to be actually quite easy to create. I mean, maybe I'm naive in Austin. Um, I think that um, uh, Austin, you have already a tremendous strength in, in technology. I think technology is the critical area of growth for health and will be for the next 50 years. Biotech is also really important. You have biotech here. It can be stronger. It will be stronger. And it goes hand in hand with what can happen in, in um, technology, health technologies. So I, I think there, there are tremendous opportunities. Um, uh, also, I got to tell you that the, the cost of living issues for San Francisco and for Boston are huge, and they drive businesses away. That is not as big an issue yet for Austin, and hopefully it will stay not an issue. Um, and, uh, and that, again, will, will create wonderful opportunity for, for, uh, for us to work together to build that here. Okay, we've got time for one more. Okay, well, again, let me thank all of you for being here, and once again, congratulate our inaugural dean, Dr. Johnson. <laughs>